I, Professor Bartha Kakkar, on behalf of ITS, I extend a very warm welcome to our guest for the session, Mr. Abhishek Bhattacharya. Dear colleagues and my dear students, at this amazing session on a very interesting topic, Underwelling Industry 4.0. Before proceeding further, I want to give a brief introduction regarding Abhishek. Abhishek is a co-founder at Viral and was a product owner for a service product at policybazaar.com, a 3x entrepreneur and a 2x author. He has been in blockchain for about three years, commercially and at Viral, he is building India's first agri-lending blockchain that can save 25 to 50% of the farmers' income and protect banks from millions in frauds. He is a regular speaker in blockchain and has given a two-day workshops in universities in an attempt to show students the importance of choosing blockchain as a career path. Apart from that, he has taken lectures in blockchain. 5,000 plus students and 15,000 plus faculties he has trained right now. He has given the lectures worldwide. So I request now to Abhishek to kindly proceed the session. Abhishek, kindly proceed the session, Abhishek. Over to you. Yeah, uh, am I audible now? Yes, sorry, I did not have unmute permissions. Uh, all right, am, am I audible, ma'am? Yes, 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 uh, you're audible. All right, thank you so much uh, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, 1,500 faculties and PhDs, uh, not, not 15,000. <laughs> I haven't had the opportunity to do that uh, till now. Uh, okay, uh, so ma'am, let me just uh, take a second to share my screen and then we can uh, start off uh, with the... Uh, class today. Uh, please let me know once it is visible. Uh, is it is it visible now? No, it, it, it's not. One second. Yeah. One minute. I'm just reopening the presentation. Abhishek, now you can share the presentation. Now you're the co-host. Yes, 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 yes. Now it was, uh, wasn't getting that. One second. Huh? All right. Uh, yeah, is it visible now? Can someone please confirm uh, if you can see my presentation? And it's, yes, yes, it is visible. And it's yeah. visible, right? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for inviting me today here. It's a pleasure and a privilege uh, to be speaking to this audience. I see already 162 people have joined, uh, 162 students. Uh, thank you so much for joining uh, me here today. And uh, uh, as we all know, we are going to, in the next uh, one hour or so, we are essentially going to take a look at uh, uh, the industry 4.0 technologies, which you all must have heard uh, many times till now, uh, such as AI, quantum computing, cloud computing, internet of things, blockchain, of course, uh, and other such technologies. But uh, because we are pressed for time already, so we, I, have, I have made sure that we cover uh, four or five uh, of the most important uh, technologies that we know. The main uh, component of, of this lecture today, as I have planned, uh, is 
that not only will we be looking at see we all know what blockchain is now we all have uh, i believe we all have a pretty fair idea uh, and we all understand somewhat what quantum computing uh, means uh, what internet of thing uh, things uh, means and what cloud computing you know uh, contains what we need to learn what the industry expect, expects uh, in in all these technologies so we won't go a lot uh, deep into understanding what these are because we fairly have an idea and we have uh, an hour to spare uh the main component that i plan on adding the which uh, which is my value proposition is as you can see that i would love to share maximum real world industry insights uh in uh, related to these technologies and building about building a successful career in in either of these technologies especially when we are coming out of this entire covid era and uh, and with that we will be taking a look at what uh, what how we suffered and what kind of numbers have come out to uh, come out because of these covid months uh, the last 10 10 months or so uh, and we'll also see that uh, what we can do to gain an edge especially at this point in time when you are in your first or second year of your bca um, we'll see what uh, how we can gain an edge and advantage in uh, as compared to your uh, peers uh, in the same position so that is that is what the what the lecture is uh, Uh, planned to be today. All right. So, ma'am has already given an introduction. So, I am currently co-founder at World, uh, which is India's first uh, agri fintech platform on blockchain. My uh, most of my experience is in blockchain since the last four years or so. So, even though we'll be covering uh, all other technologies, but uh, I have added, uh, have been partial, have been biased, and have added three or four more slides on blockchain as compared to any other technology, which which uh, who have deserved, uh, who have deserved uh, only one. uh and uh, just give me a second um yeah all right uh okay sorry all right so uh, let's let's move ahead and uh, take a look at uh, what the today's birds eye view looks like so as we discussed we'll take a look uh, at the technologies one slide each not much uh, will be uh, usually will be uh, rushing through these slides because they don't have a lot of technical uh, knowledge to be shared just few pointers uh, on the on on every slide and we will take a look at what the numbers right now are for example one important number that i've put in bold on every slide uh, is uh, the kind of salary you can expect uh, you can expect uh, right after your out of your college or maybe you have at least 2 to 2 1/2 3 years of experience but even to have that you need to start planning now right you cannot wait for those 2 to 2 1/2 3 years in industry and then plan on switching uh, the industry that's fine as well many people do but uh, again if you have the uh, insight and the vision to plan ahead nothing like it right so we'll take a look at those numbers and uh, we'll take a look uh, how to uh, how to position ourselves for maximum benefit uh, right after covid uh, i have personally uh, been hiring since the last uh, few few months and uh, i have closed a couple of positions we have had open positions in out of the five technologies we'll be discussing we had uh, open positions in four of these technologies and uh, which is major especially for 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 a startup uh, in in these covid months we did not get a lot of hit uh, because of covid because of the kind of segment we work in see covid is not not has nothing related to climate right so and world is a platform for warehouse receipt financing where farmers come and deposit their goods and take loans against them so cropping did not stop because of covid uh, neither did uh, the harvesting stop and farmers continued to uh, pour in their deposits in our partner warehouses so that cycle kept on going so we did not face a lot of hit because of covid uh, thankfully uh, but the industry did uh, face a lot of it and while we were hiring for these technologies we were we were we, we had these positions open for uh, for customers from for uh, candidates from other companies who were either laid off uh, or or were already on the notice period or were facing a salary cut so i'll tell you first hand experience of what that scenario looked like it is still there uh, believe me every day we are hiring we are interviewing and uh, what i saw back in uh, maybe january of 2020 while hiring we we always usually have some positions open that scenario has completely changed since about april may june and 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 even till now uh, it has substantially changed so these are some some of the first and experiences uh, that i would uh, i would be sharing which i believe that uh, should benefit because Uh, regarding the technologies you can definitely get uh, get on the internet as well what you won't get what i try to add as value here uh, being someone from the industry 
is what to expect when you're stepping out of your college, when you're uh, going into the industry, when you're looking for jobs or career, uh, planning a career ahead. All right, uh, all right. so uh, let's first uh, take a look at uh, a very important chart. Uh, can someone write in the, uh, I, I believe I've, I've written it there, but uh, I, you, can, you can write in the chat. Have you seen this chart uh, previously? Some, sometime in, in, in the past, it's a very famous chart. Uh, people use uh, in the industry, in the academia, everywhere. Uh, people use this uh, to uh, to analyze uh, certain certain developments, certain progress in the industry, in the technologies that we use in the industry, and so on. So this is called the Gartner hype cycle. Uh, just as a way of introduction, this uh, this is a very famous uh, graph, and you can see the divisions that these that this graph has. It all starts with uh, where the innovation is triggered, which is on on the left side, uh, which is which is on the left side of the graph. That is where things start coming into existence. People start getting to know about these things, but not a lot of people. Very very particular people who are involved in 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 this niche, and uh, they they start uh, uh, knowing about this uh, problem uh, and these technologies. Going ahead, this thing. Uh, reaches a particular peak uh, where it is called the peak of inflated expectations, where the industry starts having expectations. Bitcoin, blockchain, these were uh, these have been even till now. These have been in this uh, in this particular zone since quite a long time, since the last four years, you can say. Even though this graph spans across uh, uh, maybe five decades or so, uh, usually you can see uh, you can see the index below. Uh, some some of them are more than ten years away from uh, entering a particular phase. Uh, but this this gives you a basic understanding of uh, where what technology lies. For example, uh, artificial intelligence. I think back in um, 1950s or 60s, 57 or so. I'm I'm not I'm not sure, uh, but somewhere around that time is when John McCarthy came up with uh, coining the term uh, artificial intelligence, artificial in entities, and and then the, you know the era started. But maybe but more than 70 years, 60 years have passed since then, but we are still so at such a nascent stage when we are talking about artificial intelligence what are we what are we doing we are we are taking a look at chatbots we are taking a look at uh, conversational ai uh, and all those such integrations which we are dealing with on a very day to day basis but nothing breakthrough has come up yet uh, which you know uh, i mean i mean nothing like ultron uh, we see uh, moving around us uh, every day so that is that is uh, how this graph defines uh, usually very very uh, accurately coincides with the developments in the industry, and uh, uh, you can see that you know uh, AI would somewhere if you take a closer look right just pause a second take a closer look in all these technologies that are listed on this graph, multiple are associated with AI. I can see explainable AI there. It is uh, in, it is in the phase of peak of inflated expectations. Then we can see. Uh, then we can see responsible AI, which is just reaching the peak of inflated infl uh, expectations, but uh, is is still in the innovation trigger phase. Then we can see. Uh, let me see. Generative AI, composite AI, adaptive ML. Again, adaptive ML. Uh, this was. This is 2020's graph. 2021 graph. I uh, hasn't hasn't come out uh, come out yet, but. I believe that adaptive ML is going to uh, be moved from uh, the innovation trigger phase to at least the peak of inflated expectations in 2021. Because if you look around, based on my experience that I've seen, uh, uh, adaptive ML has come up uh, quite quite uh, into the hype, and also people have started, companies have started uh, hiring and working and developing products on on using adaptive ML. So that is one insight you can take a look at. But definitely make sure that you take a look at these technologies. Uh, some might not even make sense to you. I, I mean, uh, even even the last uh, technology that I see here, ontologies and graphs. I have no idea that what actually uh, this particular technology has uh, in it. What is it all about? So many of these, if you don't do a deep search, you might uh, not have a great idea about. But definitely some of these technologies you must have heard. You must have studied some components related to these technologies in your college as well. And also, you would be able to map uh, your career. There is a possibility that you would be able to map your career based on what you see here. This graph cannot define the career for you because this is a very broad based uh, graph uh, to tell you about technologies, but definitely can give you an idea of what to look for. A multiple blockchain enabled technologies were there on this graph back in 2018 or 19. Do go and take a look uh, at, at that. Uh, they have either either escaped this uh, graph 
totally, uh, entirely, or they have been moved into different phases, into different stages. This you can see, bring your own identity. This, this is one, uh, bring your own identity. This, by reading it here, you might not believe that this has a lot of relation with, uh, a lot of relation to uh, blockchain, but I can tell you that multiple uh, developments have been happening in, uh, in uh, decentralized identity when we are talking about blockchain, bringing uh, these technologies on, uh, on, on, on the blockchain and then verifying your identity in a very decentralized manner, which is currently completely uh, centralized. Even, even identities like Aadhaar and all, they are very centralized, right? They are not decentralized. So, uh, so these, this is a background of what this graph can give you an idea. I love this graph and this gives you a great idea. See some, some uh, I can see some technologies such as two-way brain machine interface. Two-way brain machine interface, if you remember Elon Musk, uh, I mean, I mean, just thinking out loud, Elon Musk just sometime back planted a chip in the, uh, in the brain of a pig. Uh, and then uh, his team could communicate with the pig and maybe uh, make him do things in a better manner. It was it was revolutionary. But then again, this is not a technology that uh, is is going to come into existence, and we won't be planting these chips in our heads maybe in 2022 or 25 or I don't know even in 2030. I would love to see it uh, come through, but we know that maybe a decade or so is uh, there between uh, the experiments that are going on and we using these technologies in our every, everyday life. So these are the things that you know uh, this graph can give an idea of. All right. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, let me check the time once. Uh, all right. We are 11:35. So uh, now I'll be starting with the few technologies. We'll be quickly going through what uh, what what I have seen uh, in the uh, in these particular technologies in the industry. Uh, this includes what I personally believe, not just what the world believes, but what I personally believe. What is needed to get into the industry for these particular nodes? Uh, I was previously at Policy Bazaar. Currently, I'm at my I'm running my own startup. Both the areas I've seen uh, what kind of talent gets hired. And I am pretty much sure that, uh, you know, while I was, I was in the same phase as you are, uh, I was very much concerned about my career, where I have to go, because, you know, there should be something that helps me jump out of bed in the morning. So that is something that you have to define way early in, in, in your life, if that is possible. Many a times it is not possible. I did not start into blockchain. I started as a, I started as a, a junior uh, data scientist, but, uh, but to be honest, uh, it is something that I had to have uh, figured out uh, way, uh, well in time. So that is, that is, that is one point that I, that I uh, wanted to make uh, clear uh, before we start. So that is, that is the thing. And uh, so let us take a look at what artificial intelligence uh, has very common in the people who are into uh, this field and segment and are working with good companies uh, or working with startups uh, in, in cutting edge research projects or in cutting edge industry uh, products. And let us take a look at what the most relevant pieces of, of uh, uh, importance is, is in these in this particular technologies. So first of all, uh, okay, so any questions till now, please someone, uh, if, you, if you have any question, you can write in the chat, I'll take a look or we'll cover these. I have, I have five slides, as I said, that uh, we'll be looking at five technologies and uh, I have these five slides and uh, after that, we can also take questions. Either way, it is fine. Uh, one second, let me check how much I have, yeah. All right, yeah, so we can take a look at after five slides as well, so that you can ask your all your questions across these five technologies. All right, so going ahead. Um, so going ahead, we, uh, yeah. So one thing that I wanted to uh, talk to you all about in AI, particularly in conversational AI or in, in uh, business AI is that currently the most kinds of developments, the most progress is being made at, um, is being made in, um, uh, NLP, natural language processing. I believe you must already be knowing about this uh, to some extent. If you don't have a subject uh, on AI uh, in your college, then you can go out and you can take a look uh, in any resource that you find. These are very popular, right? You, you talk to your Google uh, assistant, you talk to Asana, uh, uh, sorry, you, you talk to Alexa and all of that is uh, NLP. All of that is uh, your natural language is detected. It is processed and, uh, and this has been done since, since quite a few years now. Uh, in fact, it has quite matured uh, at this point in time. So that is one thing, conversational entities, ma talking, making people, enabling people to talk to not only just, uh, you know, things like Alexa, but also other integrating Alexa or conversational uh, entities into other uh, forms of uh, technology, such as maybe an IoT enabled device 
or or um, or maybe something attached to your computer and then that does that itself that device does a whole lot of different tasks for you and you can do that just by speaking to that device so that is something uh, and understanding that uh, those those phrases uh, from the user that is something going on very hot right now people are working a lot uh, i have seen my my colleagues past colleagues who have gotten into uh, who have gotten into these uh, uh these things uh, these areas into good companies amazon uh then facebook and all of that are those companies are hiring heavily in these particular areas because everyone wants to build a chatbot now uh, no doubt on that so this is something you can take a look at something that i have directly seen and benefited from are deep tech integrations of ai in your everyday business products so if i'm say for example uh, let me let me think an example and share with you real life i am doing loans for farmers every day farmers when you think about farmers you might not think about uh, ai and farmers talking to an ai bot directly right that's fine even i don't expect but what if that ai uh, so so i'm not talking about conversational entities anymore if i can do a deep tech integration of a, of an ai of an ai enabled uh, entity or or a process an algorithm into my everyday business process of lending that would mean that i am giving an edge into understanding the entire lending process or the behavior of my farmer that will give me value that will give a, that will drive a lot of value for my product uh, when a farmer is using it. the farmer would not might not understand that it is it is actually interacting with an ai enabled service but at the back end i would know and that i would also be knowing that i am providing an added value proposition to that particular farmer or that particular trader right who's doing maybe 2 crores or taking 2 crores of loan from me and that when even if that increase even if that increase in productivity even if that increase in uh, value or margins if you're talking about numbers if even if that is very incremental very small very marginal at the end of the day if i'm talking about 2 crores of loan per customer i'm doing 10 such customers without involving uh, much of my direct manpower and i'm able to do that uh, in a much better way using ai uh, enabled entities or algorithms that will give me a massive growth that will give me a massive possibilities of massive scale and in any startup especially or in any company all you need is scalability if you are the way you are serving one customer if the in the similar fashion you are able to serve hundreds of customers thousands of customers millions of customers that is what is needed in 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 any kind of uh, business setup right so this is something deep tech integrations using ai is is uh, very important right now if you are able to change behaviors if you are able to assist with behaviors uh, in 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 everyday applications you are buying uh, food from zomato you are booking a cab for from uber they use these things so if ai is integrated in a deep fashion with your business uh, economics that is always going to help take a look at this any kind of automation or integration that you can do in everyday products without even talking to an ai ai is just not, just not alexa right this is going to benefit you a lot if you are talking about analytics uh, going ahead analytics is again something that uh, is is uh, very important for any startup any company as well and uh, people uh, are building entire companies on on analytics uh, currently so when you apply ai to those analytics the ai can give you the ml can give you a lot of more insights that you just taking a look at uh, looking uh, just looking at those numbers uh, can so that gives you a great advantage uh, if someone is not using ai to understand the analytics that you are receiving in any case uh, you will you will be left behind because there are so many companies who are using ai now to understand these analytics better what is analytics analytics is how your users are interacting with you where are they from what device are they using what countries are they from which demographics uh, all of that information like see just visit uh, analytics.google.com see what all uh, google analytics provides right that's basic that's basic people go far beyond people create data lakes people create entire customer data platforms i have done that previously i i've seen that happen in big companies like policy bazaar and and others that uh, such data lakes are so important for you that they can give you massive growth they can give you massive earning potential uh, as a company so this is something again uh, you must uh, take a look at rpa uh, quickly robotic process at, uh, automation we all know by now it has become very famous uh, it's an implementation of ai uh, definitely and uh, this is something that uh, is is uh, coming as very important in the industry because people want to uh, people want to uh, uh, one second bablu i see that your hand is raised just one second i'll just complete this and take your question uh, and so um, yeah so rpa is something that um, 
uh, people that companies are using uh, uh, currently a lot because they want to automate their very manual and tedious processes. So again, you must think that, okay, this is a very good point that I maybe two years, three years back, I, I came across this point, a very good point. Just when you're looking out for a career, just think that what you are going for, is it something that tomorrow, any day you wake up and an AI enabled entity can replace that, can do it for you? Does it require less uh, mind power, less uh, like le less brain power, and more hand power? If that is the thing, you should be you should be really really careful in choosing such a career. Be very mindful about that because the way the the pace at which these things are uh, evolving, uh, these are these are phenomenal. I mean, you have to understand that uh, you know it is it is very much going to be uh, possible that in the very near future. All of these uh, abilities are going to be, you know, completely uh, whitewashed by AI, uh, and then you will suffer. So it's better that you plan plan uh, beforehand. So many people are losing their jobs because of AI. Many are being created as well because you need people to develop these kinds of softwares. But then there are they, these are very elite jobs. These are not the same kind of jobs that AI replaced in the first place. Very important uh, to uh, to take a look at that. Yes, uh, I. And I can't see them now, but if you can, uh, you know, post in the chat or something. I saw Bablu, I saw Lakshay, I think, raising hands. Yeah. Can I have your questions? Students, if you have any questions, you can write in the chat box. Because I saw two people raise, uh, two students had raised hands. I remember Bablu and Lakshay, but I don't see your questions or if you can unmute, you can say that as well. Was it my mistake? The raise hand feature? Then I'll, then I'll just proceed. All right, so if you have any questions, please write in the chat, I'll take them up, right? Otherwise I'll proceed. All right, uh, so taking a look ahead. Okay, so uh, let's see what prerequisites you can do now because you have time now, especially uh, uh, all these 10 months, you know, people were sitting at home and uh, there was there was a lot of comfort and a lot could have been done in these months. It is still going. I see, I saw in, on video that some of you have, uh, your classes have already started, but maybe it has it is partial, I guess, because uh, I, I guess so. If that is the case, you still have some time that you're spending at home. Even if not, let's see, let's, let's just forget that COVID was ever there. Uh, even if not, uh, then it would mean uh, that you still have a lot of time at your hand because you're currently not employed, you're, you're a student. And this is all the time that you can get. Classes are over by 4, 5 p.m. And that's all. Because once you start in the industry, you will not go anywhere less than 8 p.m., 9 p.m. these days. Especially after COVID, no company is going to leave you uh, on, a, on a single day before 7, 8, 8, 30, 9 p.m. Uh, easily. So, uh, so be, be cautious of that. So this is the time you can invest. Just stress yourselves. Stretch yourselves as much as possible and make sure that either any of these, I'm, I'm going to cover five technologies today, any of these you like, uh, any of these you feel that yes, you're destined to do, please make sure that you stretch yourselves uh, now to cover at least the prerequisites that are needed for getting into a good industry position. I'll, I'll share that uh, those with you. So, uh, so okay, we already have almost 1150. Uh, I'll quickly cover these. For AI, definitely good, good computer science basics is needed. Understanding of AI entities, chatbots is a plus we always look for these uh, additional capabilities that you can bring on the table because otherwise, uh, I don't know about big companies. Uh, I, I pretty much know about big companies. They are happy uh, in teaching uh, all these things to you, taking three months uh, just for this. But startups and, and mid-sized companies are not interested in spending on teaching you these things. They expect you to know these uh, most of these things, at least have an idea of how these work, right? So if you can have these as prerequisites, it's always good to have. Right. Also, believe me, something that uh, even the colleges have always tried to impart as much as possible, but do continue interacting with people from the industry because the third point of a prerequisite of understanding of business processes and AI's potential impact on those processes. That is something that you only get when you are uh, mostly uh, get when you are interacting with people from the industry who have faced it directly. Because believe me, I had no idea of what I'm going to face while hiring until I had actually doing this, right? Uh, so that's that's something very important. 
if you have a chance if you are interacting with someone from the industry it's good try to pick their brain as much as much as possible so that you are well prepared and this is what gives you an advantage everything else is available on google this not this is only something that you can get from an industry uh, person now i do i make sure that i uh, constantly uh, get in touch with people who are who are way uh, above me who are into in the same area of blockchain or uh, maybe business processes and all of that and i try to pick their brain as much as possible but believe me uh, if i would have done this earlier it would have only helped me more so that is one thing uh, that 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 uh, i wanted to share so make sure that you do that you can see in bold after one and a half two two and a half years if you are if you are in a good company and you are switching uh, to another great profile you can expect a salary of up to even uh, starting from 11 lakhs and maybe 14 15 17 lakhs as well based on your uh, on your on your experience specific experience make sure you are not sitting idle in your company i cannot emphasize this enough just getting a good job is not sufficient if you are getting into that job and are not aligned on a project are just sitting that name on your resume is not going to help you at least uh, not going to help you if you're looking for cutting edge work in cutting edge uh, 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 developments in maybe early stage startups or mid-sized companies not at all they they see through all these things right i i always do if you if if a cv comes to me and i see that uh, uh, there is not an initiative that you took in your last company there is uh, you were on on bench possibly or uh, you were in a in a in a uh, you are in a project which was a POC, not a live uh, production project. Then again, that is luck. That is very luck based if you get a good project. But if you're on a POC, you have less work to do. We all know that. We have all been through uh, that, those those uh, times, right? So if you're doing a POC in a big company like, like TCS or Infosys or anyone, uh, not to take names, but if you're doing a POC, you know that you'll have less, uh, you'll be less busy, right? You're not working on a production level uh, 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 product production production level uh, installment so uh, definitely uh, you're you're going to be more free that should reflect in your resume that you went out you stepped ahead and you did something else to cover or up that that dirt in in your knowledge or in your experience if that is not uh, aligned then it is going to be very problematic in, in in getting a good path everyone gets a job your motive should be to get the best job that you can get all right so that for that you have to show initiative nothing else show show initiative even even if your grades are bad even if your uh, project is subpar you will be at a much better you will be placed at a much better position as compared to any of your peers directly from the industry this is the only thing that i uh, look for and i've been doing so since since quite a few years now this is the only thing many people look while shortlisting the cv as well don't see initiative you don't even deserve an interview many a times it happens believe me if it sounds harsh then you must have heard. Uh, I, I think I think Bill Gates or someone said that, right? That if you think your teacher is tough, wait till you get a boss, right? Uh, in the industry, these things are what matter. To be honest, uh, yeah. So let's let's go ahead from AI. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Next was Internet of Things. So I told you that there are out of these one, two, three, four, five, five technologies that I have uh, today on my slides. I told you that uh, four of these we had open positions of in the last ten months, and uh, we filled uh, we filled one of these, and the three uh, we we closed one project, so we closed that profile, and the other two are still open, right? So Internet of Things was one of them because we are venturing into IoT and we want to develop uh, IoT based based things, right? Um, so uh, okay. So technically, um, uh, in in IoT, there is a bit of a bit of a different kind of uh, experience that is uh, needed, a bit different kind of knack that is needed because uh, I myself did not have this. I I have been interested in AI as a as a data scientist. Also, I was very much into DS and AI. I have been into cloud computing now. Quantum computing is something we'll be discussing, which I've been interested in, but because I don't have a great deep uh, uh, background of physics and math, I, I, I don't think I'll be making a career in that. Definitely a choice that I had to make. And blockchain is definitely as I, I'm currently making a career in. So these are what we will be discussing, but IoT is something that I uh, could never get interested myself in doing by my hands. While hiring, I definitely have to get interested about all of these technologies. But uh, uh, so IoT needs a different kind of a background. Uh, it needs a better understanding of electronics. It needs a better understanding of also of computer science things, of cloud computing and all of that so that you can create great interfaces, great connections, great networks of things and all of that. 
So those are the prerequisites going through this uh, in, in a bit more fast uh, fashion. Relevant uh, important uh, corners of, of this particular technology are using IoT for fraud prevention. This is what we are doing. This is what we, we plan to do now. We are, we are currently not using IoT. We are preventing borrower related frauds using blockchain technology, but we want to integrate IoT and that is where the position is open. Uh, but we want to use IoT for, for fraud uh, prevention. Uh, which includes behavior detection. That's how you uh, use IoT basically. IoT in healthcare is something that uh, uh, that is that is very important. Um, uh, healthcare has now evolved so much. You know that you know so many things uh, are, are are you can use some devices. You can use uh, fitness trackers. You can use blood pressure trackers, and all of those are connected to the internet many a times now. If you if you just buy the high end ones, they are usually connected to the internet, right? Uh, so, so when, uh, so even, even, even I use a ring that uh, gives me my heart rate, gives me my, uh, my sleep, gives me my, uh, temp body temperature, all of that it gives me, but all of that it pushes to the cloud, but this is IOT, right? This is, this is internet connected thing. This, that is all uh, about internet of things, right? So, so, uh, in healthcare, this becomes very important because all of this data is very uh, much used, uh, for by the doctor as well, if they if they actually want to give you an additional uh, kind of uh, uh, assistance on your health, uh, and and this is only evolving. Even till now, this this has not gone to the like maximum of the population. But then this is something that people are uh, have started becoming interested in. People have started buying these devices, and doctors have started integrating these in their own processes of of medical uh, process medical processes, right? Uh, Dr. Barkha, who's, who's, uh, who has invited me to this event, she is working in healthcare uh, and you can definitely get in touch with her. And she's also working in blockchain. So she's, she's, she can give you a great edge and of understanding in these things, I, I believe. So that is something you can take a look at. IoT with blockchain, again, we are using. So point one and point three, we both are about to use. For security, by putting all of the data that we, are get, we will be getting from IoT, putting it on the blockchain, this is something that uh, we'll be taking a look at. And uh, I know that it's, it's going hot in the industry. Uh, climate actions, uh, one line on that is that people are using a lot of IoT enabled uh, setups uh, to understand uh, how climates are, uh, climate changes are happening. And that includes mostly government and NGOs uh, working, uh, working on these uh, processes, right? Uh, okay, quick uh, prerequisites I'm mostly told. Cloud computing is important. Experience with cloud is important because uh, uh, see, essentially speaking, uh, nowadays, people are not doing everything by their hand. People are not just taking devices, connecting them onto to a LAN network and doing these things. AWS especially, I have, I have experience with AWS, so that's why, I'm, but all clouds might be giving these. AWS gives you a lot of uh, added advantage uh, when we are talking about, uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, implementing internet of things enabled uh, setups, right? So a lot of these things, they, these provide as platform as a service, software as a service, all of these are given by AWS uh, in across technologies such as blockchain and uh, IoT and AI and even quantum computing. I, I think I put that point as well. So this is something that you should know. Cloud computing is something you should know in any case now, uh, has been in, in the hype since many years now, cloud computing. Uh, yeah, that's mostly it. The average salary expectation is six lakhs to 13 lakhs. Um, and uh, because why I'm saying this, these numbers are not, I haven't, I haven't even taken from the, from Google, believe me, these numbers are something I've taken directly from experience because of the recruiters that we are in touch with, that we, that help us hire and close these positions, the position that we have already hired, these numbers are from there directly. Apart from quantum computing, I can tell you AI, IoT, cloud computing, and blockchain. These four numbers that I'll show in bold on these slides, it is from personal experience. It is from the recruiter experience from the industry experience and not from Google. Uh, quantum computing, I did not have an experience with hiring. So definitely there is, there is something I have not provided, right? Okay, uh, all right. So uh, that's it, any questions till now? Uh, otherwise, uh, Barkha ma'am, there is, uh, as I told you that, uh, uh, because this was supposed to go till 12 uh, PM. So I had a meeting at 12 PM. So I'll need a two minute break because I need to call and let them, inf I need to inform them that this is going to stretch a bit longer. So I need a two minute break. People can go on a, bi a short bio break as well, uh, if, if, if you don't mind. And uh, otherwise, if you have any questions, please write in the chat and I'll, I'll take them up right at in, in two, two, two and a half minutes. Uh, is that fine, Barkha ma'am? Okay. okay, okay, okay. Yes, I'll just, just go on a short call.
Good morning, students. If you have any queries, please write your questions in the chat box. Everybody, all the students are requested. If you have any questions, just write in the chat box. Guest will join in just next two minutes. Aman, you have any question? Okay, so you can write in the chat box, Aman. Chat is disabled. Okay, I'll yes, just check. Uh, yes, I, I also was not able to write in the chat earlier. Uh, yes, please post your uh, comments in the chat and I'll quickly take them up because I truly believe that uh, you must be having some questions. That is the only value that you can derive from this. Uh, from this lecture because otherwise everything you can definitely find on find on google uh, other than what i bring from the industry perspective uh, i think now chat is enabled for you all you can just write in the chat box All right, I can see. Uh, so Aman, uh, would you please, Aman, Tushar, would you please uh, paste these in uh, uh, by not in a direct message, but in for all, because otherwise uh, people wouldn't understand that what we are talking about, right? So you can, you can, uh, advanced math is required for AI and machine learning is one question. Another question by Aman is what are your views about data science and machine learning, but best if you can, yes, yes, Aman, thanks a lot. Uh, please use the all, all attendees option so that everyone can get the question as well of what we are talking about. Great. I have three questions. Uh, all right. Let me just one second. I'll, I'll just start. <coughs> all right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I've not switched on the video. Yeah. I hope uh, my video audio is clear now. Yeah. So starting back, uh, let me see the questions once. Yeah. Okay, so the first question is, uh, what are your views about data science and machine learning? Perfect question. I uh, was into data science right out of college when I when I uh, came out of college. And uh, in data science, uh, uh, a lot of developments are happening because it, it has become very popular now, right? You all understand. And people are using data science at un, in, in unparalleled uh, uh, ways uh, to achieve so many, so many things, right? So many uh, business advantages. When I was uh, into data science, uh, personally speaking, I did not get a get a get an opportunity to work uh, to combine data science with uh, Anj. Please don't do a direct message. Please choose uh, all attendees uh, so that everyone knows what we are talking about, right? So when we are yeah, so uh, as a direct experience, I did not get the opportunity to combine machine learning and data science in its truest sense, as I know. But uh, my two cents on these would be that uh, these two go very well in hand. So AI, data science, machine learning, all these are uh, you know synonymous. Uh, data science is all about what you can do with the, the immense amount of data that you have uh, available in your hands in the systems now, right? So if you're able to uh, deploy ML algorithms or, or ML entities or uh, such kinds of programs on that massive kind of data that you have, that is what gives you the advantage. Only data science, only ML, only AI, all of these can seldom give you something, give you, a, give you much of an advantage, right? But uh, I did not use ML at that time, but uh, uh, I, was, I was using data science in, in, its, in its just core form. 
you know mostly working with data from from uh, from our net new accounts we used to call them and we used to run some models on them some part of ml was there but not what uh, i can share a lot of insights on uh, but definitely you should take a le- look at learning ml so even if you're going into ai right just take a look at ml first so anyone else uh, who didn't even have this question uh, but if you want to get into ai take a look at ml understand ml first understand the algorithms first how they work how you uh, make machines think uh, after that comes ai ai is a broader umbrella what you need is uh, is ml right uh, okay uh, i hope i answered your question aman if you have any clarification you can write it down otherwise i hope i have answered your question uh, that were my views uh, mostly uh, then i see i see tushar asked advanced maths is required for ai and machine learning not advanced maths um see i i was not great at maths okay but my first job was as a junior data scientist so it does not uh, it, it is it is not like uh, and because these are related fields uh, ai and machine learning and data science so i could I, i could say that some amount of math knowledge is definitely needed it's good to have but again if you have that knack for these uh, technologies such as ai ml dds uh, uh, and all of these then you will be able to prosper that's not a problem it's not like that you have to be a math wizard to get into all these things so many people are going into these things not everyone is 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 phenomenal in maths right being good in maths is good if you if you're really poor in maths maybe uh, if you can g- gather that passion to get into this well and good if not what you can all you can choose is uh, basically Uh, you know uh, uh, if if you're not if you're not if you're poor in that especially uh, then uh, maybe you can you can then take a look then take a call that okay data science thoda mushkil ho jayega uh, karna uh, something else you, you can do there are so many technologies we are discussing even today and i can tell you ai is math based of course iot is not blockchain is not um, uh, quantum computing is definitely cloud computing is not so out of the five technologies today uh, three do not need a great form of uh, math right so definitely these are the options that you can try out uh, very easily and that's that's not a problem right so yeah you'll be you'll be well on your way just plan ahead aisa mat karna ki ekdam last day pe last day of your college and you're thinking ki i'm not good in maths uh, now let me suddenly switch my uh, my my uh, my preference of a career that i want to build agar aisa socha hai to then you continue and you maybe take a small internship or a job in data science ai ml and see how you are performing if not then it'll you can understand that waste of four months five months six months maybe or two months if that's an internship right so that is something you can do but again nothing uh, as helpful as planning ahead uh or another question i have is uh, what are my views uh, what are views what are what the basics do we require for ai i already answered this question i guess uh, ansh uh, maybe i'll just quickly open that uh, uh you can take a look quickly three points just do a quick read so that we can be on our time and we can cover more otherwise these are the basics uh, you need uh, based on my industry experience this these are what we asked from in, in in even in the interviews and usually see you have to map your map out what the industry needs not just what you are being taught uh, or you are learning in andrew ng courses or 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 any other course on edx or coursera but you have to understand what the industry needs right so so these are these are what i could map map it out for you based on what we've been hiring in or what i've seen uh, other companies hire in right what is the difference between iot and iiot okay so i i don't think i'm very well placed to give this difference because the first thing that i told you was uh, this is one iot is one place where i was personally not very very much inclined into uh, so Uh, you can you can maybe take a look on the internet because uh, what what happens is uh, uh, i w- i would not want to give you certain pointers which i'm not very sure of uh, which you can find better on google because th- this is this is one question where i won't be able to provide you an industry advantage uh, from my my uh, vanity point so yeah so i'll i'll skip that question but yeah those were the couple of lines that i could tell you uh, okay what is plate rishab rishab plate is i don't know what plate is uh, Okay, next question is what are the basics? Okay, we have covered this. Okay, so Rishab, you must have asked about uh, expected plateau point for blockchain. Yeah, I, I think this is this is what you were originally asking as well. So uh, Rishab, uh, being in blockchain myself, uh, I'm best placed. Like I was not very well placed for answering that I I O T question, but I'm very well placed to uh, answer this blockchain question. And we believe uh, the entire industry of blockchain believes that uh, uh, the plateau point of blockchain is far away currently. 
uh, see, this is not a, this is, this is, this was one hour. We did not have a lot of time and this is not a technical workshop or a technical lecture. Uh, but uh, see, whenever, whenever I have given these blockchain technical lectures, we have, we have traversed into so many deep tech topics, such as the generations of blockchain, the kinds of blockchains we have, uh, uh, communication between two different blockchains, which is not a, a not a early generation thing like generation one, such as Bitcoin, generation two, such as Ethereum, none of these. Uh, provide you uh, inter-blockchain communication. So people are working on some ge such generations of blockchain and all of this has happened within the last 11 years. So you can understand that 11, 11 and a half years. So you can understand that the kind of speed that blockchain has had till now and still so much so is there. See, AI has been there since over, over 60 years, 70 years, right? But it's, it, even that hasn't achieved anywhere close to plateau point, right? For, for it, for AI. Blockchain in 11 years, if it has been able to achieve so much, then you can understand going forward. Uh, there is so much to do. There is so much to see. Even if nowadays, you're not using blockchain in your everyday life. Not everyone is. Luckily, uh, because of our platforms like us, people uh, such as farmers, you could not have, I could not have even imagined that farmers would be the people who would be using blockchain. But they are. They are getting the loans on blockchain. They might not be understanding it or understanding the, the, the core uh, technical complexity of that. But believe me, it is it is a pleasure to develop these these applications for such a, a segment of population, such an important segment of population like farmers, traders, right? Uh, agriculture is such an important part of our economy. Uh, anyways, so so the plateau point for blockchain, uh, we personally, all of us personally believe uh, in blockchain is that uh, it's, it's far away. It's, it's at least 2030, 2035, not before that. So many, so much to do. We want you to use blockchain in your everyday lives. We want you to uh, pay for your Starbucks coffee with blockchain. Right, so that is not happening. Uh, using using a using a blockchain based currency, not blockchain. Uh, that is not happening. You cannot go to a Starbucks and pay via Bitcoin. Right, that is a use case case study that we usually cover in one of my technical lectures. But I'm just telling you, you are not doing that right now. No shop in real life is expect uh, is accepting Bitcoin payments. Online, you are definitely doing because you do not have to you don't have to like wait in line uh, for your transaction to be over. Okay, not going into the technicalities, but you are not paying via Bitcoin in your everyday shops in your market. Right, we want that to happen. Right? When that happens, technology gets developed more, governments start using it at, at much better rates. Currently, we are working with governments, right? Uh, the state government, 1400 of our warehouses are, are of, of uh, the Maharashtra State Warehousing Corporation. It's government, state government warehouses. They are using blockchain, right? So it's, 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 it's in a great, uh, the peak is far away, you can say, right? Uh, Varnika, I see your hand raised. If you could just post your question in the chat box, uh, if, if, if that hand raised is not by uh, mistake. Okay, uh, I hope Rishabh, I was uh, able to explain uh, your, your uh, answer your question. So Tushar has asked me that how to prepare for internship in computers if I don't have a good studies and doesn't have any good experience. Uh, I believe that you're asking for internship in computer science, any associated technologies, not difficult, not difficult. So many people we hire as interns into uh, internship positions, even, even at World or even I've seen in other companies of, uh, of, the, of the same stature. Uh, so many people who have not even been in uh, a B.Tech in computer science and engineering or a B.C.A. or an M.C.A. They are taking jobs every now and then. People, so many courses are available now, even if you're not talking about uh, specialized uh, skills such as blockchain. But then again, uh, see, it is it is uh, very clear that you have ample resources on YouTube, Coursera, edX, all of these places are, you know, uh, you can uh, you can you can uh, you can be well, well uh, suited for that those positions. Right. So uh, yeah, cool. So anyways, uh, you can definitely, if you, if you have, if you, even if you're not good in studies, but if you're interested in something, you can get, get an advantage uh, way beyond anyone else. See, if you have passion for something and if you're, if you're willing to put in the hours, believe me, first-hand experience, you can uh, even, even perform better than someone who has done a BTEC in computer science and engineering. Uh, you can do better than them in, 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 in the same uh, resource. It is, it is all very, it is all, all up to you. It is all up to you, uh, right? If you have just basic understanding of the concepts, you can do way better, right? Just have the passion. Make sure if your studies are not good, your passion is, is, is fills up for that role, right? Uh, okay. Prince Manotra, good company names for AI. Uh, uh, see, if you want to get into real uh, people who are just making AI bots for other companies, those are those Indeed, then service companies you can search on the internet. I'm not very aware of. Uh, service companies are not 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 very famous service companies that I can think of. But if you want to go into other companies where AI is being being used in uh, their everyday processes, almost every company now, right? So, like I said, that we are also hiring for AI. We have had uh, hired for AI in the past. 
So uh, Facebook, I told you, Facebook, Google, uh, Amazon. My, I, I've known people from uh, like uh, personally as well who've gone into Amazon into AI roles, well-paid AI roles, and uh, working on great stuff because you know that Amazon is working really hard on AI, right? So yeah, so uh, those those are the things that you always have available. Uh, yeah, so that's it. That's all. Mainly you can search for any good company is working in AI now. I mean, if they are not, they are anyways going to be left behind, right? If anyone forgets their user ID, uh, password of blockchain wallet, is it possible to recover it? Because as we know on blockchain data is not stored on a single server. So both your points, I would say that, um, uh, so they, they are not related, right? Uh, blockchain data being stored on multiple servers, that's just distributed nature of, of, of the transactions that are happening on blockchain, that happen on blockchain. That is a different concept altogether. That is used for something else. Your first point was that whether we can, whether you can click on forgot, forgot password and receive a link on your email and fetch uh, the private key to your wallet, not possible. That is not how, again, it is a, out of the scope of this lecture, but just to give you a line on that, uh, these, these, are, these, these use, uh, uh, these use PKI uh, encryption standard, right? These are the, these are uh, blockchain wallets. Typically, are are secured with a, a combination of public and uh, private key infrastructure, right? Uh, so that that's what PKI is. And and I have I even even I've 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 written a book on this and mentioned in great detail on this. That uh, in fact, all of this is so important that in my entire book, which is on blockchain, the first entire part is on cryptography. Blockchain does not start even until I guess two hundred pages. So you can understand how important cryptography is for blockchain, right? So that is how uh, how 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 importance uh, what kind of importance it has. So this is this is how those wallets are uh, secured. And once you lose access to your private key, uh, there there is there is very less chance that you can you can uh, in any other way uh, you can just click on a forgot password link and the company can provide that to you. Especially for example, if you're using a, a maybe a cryptocurrency exchange which is centralized. They have that potential. They have that capability because they store your private key. If it is a decentralized exchange, then you have you're 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 out of luck. You if you lose, uh, there have been so many cases. You can go online and read on the internet. People have lost millions of dollars just because they've lost that one private key that they had to keep uh, in their memory or or that that phrase that they had to have in their memory or written somewhere. And that is why people have either started using hardware wallets now. Or they maybe write the private key and put it in their Godrej locker. That is how important that piece of code is, that piece of uh, phrase is, the seed phrase is. So make sure that you uh, take care of it. Yeah, uh, it's not possible, right, uh, to get it get it back. Is it important to work in conjunction between blockchain and Bitcoin, or we can use any other mode of transaction? Again, uh, 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 these 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 all I love to cover in my blockchain lectures, but this lecture is not on blockchain, right? Uh, so. So what I can tell you is, uh, I'm sorry. So what I can tell you is that blockchain, the first thing that I say when I'm starting my blockchain lectures is keep cryptocurrency separate, keep blockchain separate. For example, uh, the bill that is going, that is, that is going to be acted on, on I think 5th February uh, on whether or not, again, the Indian government would like to ban uh, cryptocurrencies uh, and Bitcoin and come up with maybe uh, its own cryptocurrency or something like that. See, th this has been so dubious since forever. But on the other hand, the government, Indian government has been so pro in uh, supporting uh, blockchain projects, like we have seen everywhere, right? Even our projects, we are working with 1400 warehouses of government, blockchain based. It's blockchain that they accepted. Major banks that we have on our platform, lenders that we have on our platform, they are, they are age old banks, but they are accepting blockchain based uh, applications. So everyone is happy with blockchain. So just don't make sure that you uh, tune your question a bit in a manner that how you can work without putting this conjunction of Bitcoin and blockchain uh, together. Research more on blockchain and especially permissioned blockchains because that is what industry and banks and uh, uh, states, uh, governments are interested in. They are not interested in uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum and public blockchains. They are more in interested in permissioned blockchains, which we are, which, which world is as well. Uh, all right, all right. So I have where to start to study AI. Uh, maybe, maybe this is a very broad question. Uh, go for Andrew Ng courses for ML, data science, AI. Uh, he, he, he teaches well. Otherwise, this is a very broad, broad question. When we hunt an internship, so firm ask many things. They have in resume, but we are learning only programming languages. So how to get internships because it is necessary. Okay, personal experience. Um, I did an internship with uh, NIC, Government of India, National Informatics Center, uh, back in, uh, in my third year which was a mandatory internship. So 
so for that uh, i remember my experience to be to be able to tell them that what i have done uh, apart from my college course work which was very helpful because uh, nic though it sounds government but they make sure that their interview process matlab uh, ghusne ke baad if you don't have a lot of work but the interview process they make sure that it is very hard right uh, so they they asked me a lot of things they took a lot of uh, insights into what i have been doing apart from my college course work just show that you will be well in line uh, to get an internship see very honestly what i look for if i see again back to that point if i see someone who has shown initiative in their everyday lives right you are waking up in the morning maybe at 5 am 6 am 7 am 8 am whatever right and then you have so many hours 16 hours uh, at the minimum right stop sleeping for 8 hours if you if, if that is what is necessary right you are i don't know what age you are right now but uh, definitely younger than me don't need to sleep 8 hours whatever science tells right thode dino ke liye so chhod do 8 ghante sona right that is important So if you are able to show initiative that okay after 5 uh, pm uh, I did classes till 5 pm and then I put in three hours on something even if that hasn't resulted in a lot of things but that shows initiative when that initiative comes uh, on the table while you, uh, someone is interviewing you they understand that okay when I hire you I will be able to ask you to put in those extra hours to learn things which I'll teach you or I'll make sure that I guide you and that 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 you can get the teaching uh, the the education in place. that component is needed to get good internships we hire in that i i personally hire in that way and i've seen i've got myself hired as well uh, that way uh, many times right be it internship be it jobs uh, these things have been very important uh, everywhere in the industry that i've seen initiative uh, initiative is important not the education or the skill that you already have show that you can take that skill and the company will be glad to hire you that is how you can find good internships even if you don't have a lot to show on your resume right okay i hope i've answered your question uh, i'll just move ahead so that we can quickly cover more and then i'll take some questions again uh, we only have 1221 on the clock okay uh, all right any other question uh, just one second any other question you can write i saw one question did i did i miss that uh, oh no where to start uh, study a yeah, apna print so as i said that uh, you can take a look uh, online so many resources coursera is good uh, and ung courses for ml is good again these are related technology so it's not like uh, you straight away start learning ai uh, artificial intelligence in its uh, uh, itself uh, learn ml first maybe before learning one one piece of uh, advice i'd like to give is that before learning make sure you map out what you want to do just because ai is in hype i would learn, want to learn ai don't make make sure that you don't do that make sure that you map out what you actually want to do right uh, eventually you do you want to work on ai entities go for ai you want to work on ml models go for ml that is also part of ai only right very close very close uh, to what what anyways you are going to uh, experience in the industry right okay cool um okay give me one second hmm. sorry all right so quickly i uh, told you about ai i told you about iot we'll quickly go to cloud computing we'll cover this in 2 minutes uh, um we are already late 1223 it is um okay so uh, cloud computing will 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 skip quantum computing or maybe a line on quantum computing because anyways uh, it is not very prevalent in india as of now i see another chat but i'll take it later right book recommendations on blockchain read mine but then again that will be gloating so uh, i'll i'll tell you i'll tell you i i have some very specific books that i also read i can tell you just just give me some time and we'll come to blockchain blockchain is at the last right so um uh cloud computing yes cloud computing very quickly it has been in hype and it has been in industry use also it's not like ai which is you know uh, sometimes coming into hype and uh, creating a lot of use cases and then not not like that cloud computing everyone is using now netflix is on aws we are on aws as well but yeah netflix is an example that we can discuss that is on aws runs micro services based in infrastructure all of that is running at high scale and speed on uh, setups like aws people don't own servers anymore to be honest right that's not how you scale right so uh, razor pay look at razor pay's implementation if you find a uh, go online go to youtube i had seen one of their uh, i think cto speaking uh, on how they use aws nothing valuable than uh, than hearing to such people who have used aws in their daily lives and have progressed and are now operating at massive scales it is a pay everyone knows right every every other website you see uses razor pay right so that is very important now uh, if you are using aws azure uh, google cloud uh, compute all of these things are cloud uh, platforms but definitely aws is in the most demand also uh, one factor that i didn't consider 
some of you might not even be looking for jobs maybe some of you would be going for uh, startups what i learned the hard way is that you have to be cloud enabled starting from day one nowadays uh, i mean i don't know but excuse me people don't really buy hosting from big rock they just set up an aws instance and uh, they they do the do the entire work start entire work there and then they scale as they grow which is what we did but there were so many things that i learned uh, the hard way uh, at world first of all as i said that this is another position that we had open but it was see you can see the expected mid level salary is 9 lakhs to 16 lakhs this was being costly for us um uh, honestly this was 9 lakhs for a startup just on the cloud computing part of it uh is 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 it was out of our budget so uh, but yeah we knew that you know this these are very important parts so what we did was so what i personally did was so i i handled the product and the tech part of the company so what i personally did, did was i went through entire aws i learned aws and now i am a you can say that i am i have not passed their exam yet but if i give an attempt i might soon be giving an attempt and i'll i'll at least get a certificate to show as well but in in terms of knowledge i've gone through the entire cloud computing course and now i can say that i am i am i am uh, very close to being a cloud computing engineer as well right so now we saved those 9 lakhs that is how you operate a startup right if you don't have money to do something you do it yourself right so i had to spend a lot of time because there are so many things there are load balancers there are um, especially so i learned aws only uh, things are similar across the platforms but again which is the most in demand i would learn love to learn that uh, and so aws is something that provides you uh, so aws also has a, a platform as a service offering for blockchain right was not there maybe 2 years back 1 and 1/2 years back but it is there now so and it is iot based implementations ai based implementations aws provides in great extent right so this is something that we learned but uh, so every company would need this some of you might be willing to go and build a startup of yourself you will need this from day one you might not need ai from day one you might not need iot quantum or even blockchain from day one if you are not a blockchain company but you will need cloud computing any company you are any company that has an existence on the internet especially if you are a product company not a service company if you are a product company who has a product uh, that is that goes to either customers directly or b2b enterprise customers you will need a uh, cloud computing experience right so uh, make sure that you if you are uh, ready for it if you are interested in this Uh, make sure you get a good knowledge of these and just try out aws provides you one year of one instance free for one year 12 months you can try out so many things there without even spending a penny and even after that the price is very low it is just few cents uh, every hour right so that is something you can do you can take good knowledge of cloud computing within a week or 10 days or uh, 14 days and uh, right familiarity with one major cloud provider which is what i did aws i chose you can do that bit of computer science basics uh, to be strong and networking basics to be strong that helps it is not an not a prerequisite mandatorily but it helps it helped me because uh, you know when you are doing load balancer and then you are config yeah so then you are configuring uh, uh, maybe security groups so that people from uh, from one enterprise can access your uh, apis another bank may not be able to access those apis but they have a separate set of apis that they want to access lekin all of this is residing on your own aws instance right you don't have separate instances for all of these so how to configure so that you can you know do all these security groups and you can map those ips and restrict other ips all of that uh, is becomes a bit difficult if you have uh, zero networking basics but uh, if you do it, it is it is an added advantage otherwise also it is good to go right even without the networking part there is so much to learn and help uh, with uh, in uh, uh, cloud computing in general but aws is the answer uh, to be honest i mean i'm not endorsing aws but uh, it is it is good my personal experience it is good we use aws ah one point is that if you are building a startup aws is something that i found to provide you most kind of help the the best kind of help in terms of credits and uh, support business support also they are monthly okay uh, just to give you an internal number our monthly burn on just cloud is upwards of 18 19000 rupees right how much are we paying now so we used to pay that we were paying when we were 14000 a month we were paying uh, we were paying that kind of amount every month right now how much do we pay? now we are at 18000 19000 per month this is only going to grow the moment we add another bank another warehouse it is going to go it is going to 25000 30000 40000 easily policy was i was there at policy was i can't share a number but it's a massive cloud bill that they pay so the more you grow you are paying great cloud bills right but believe me this 18000 uh, 19000 rupees we are not paying anymore all is being uh, done by credits with every every other accelerator that we are a part of or you know any kind of program that we are a part of aws is happily distributing credits they distribute so many credits that we now have at least about 
uh, uh, two, three lakh or four lakh rupees in credits. So till the time we reach that kind of a bill, we are good to go. I mean, that's big help. So you can see these nine to sixteen lakhs. How we uh, prevented? I learned uh, AWS, so I so we did not have to hire someone with ten lakh rupee uh, salary. Also, the kind of uh, one lakh a year or two lakhs a year that we were supposed to pay in the first year itself uh, to AWS, uh, AWS made sure that we don't have to pay that by by being so generous in giving us fifteen, twenty thousand, twenty five thousand dollars in credits. That's huge. For us, cloud became so. This is a great insight. I did not have it. I learned it hard way. So make sure that you learn learn from it. So what happened is we went from uh, two three lakh billing a month in uh, cloud to zero, because no resource and also no uh, no no uh, expenditure on the bills. That is this helps these three lakhs help a startup uh, to an extent you cannot imagine. These three lakhs might not be big for a established company and established company like Policy Bazaar or Google or Netflix, but definitely is 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 a big lifeline for a company like us. Three lakhs is huge, right? Two lakhs is huge, right? So this is something uh, you can you can definitely uh, delve more into, uh, ma'am. How much time do we have? I have twelve thirty on the clock. Um, let me know. I'll otherwise I'll just rush through these slides once, and take some questions. <clears throat> we can go for five ten minutes more. Five ten minutes. Right. So I'll just I'll okay. just go through this. So quantum computing, good math and physics knowledge is needed here. Um, uh then uh, most relevant things that are being used currently are encryption encryption and such cryptography based implementations of quantum computing are being uh, uh, tested and experimented with the most in real life also uh, there are very less kinds of uh, uh, implementations that have happened yet in india i don't see much or any to be honest that is why uh, mostly i found these roles to be uh, existing outside india and that to very research based roles right so when google was working on that their deep wave uh, quantum computer uh, that's not a product that they are giving it to, uh, to the public right so hence these companies need people to continue that research in quantum computing because that is far away peak uh, not even talking about peak even the initial trigger that we saw in the gartner hype cycle even that is far away for quantum computing right now as far as i believe one uh, uh, th uh, thought i would like to give if someone is even uh, even interested a bit in quantum computing take a look at something called creative destruction lab it just came to my mind and otherwise i would have put a slide on it so yeah so uh, take a look at sorry yeah so uh, take a look at creative destruction lab it is hosted by university of toronto we were a part of uh, that accelerator in the blockchain stream but that is the first kind of accelerator where i saw that they are running parallel streams for uh, quantum computing for uh, even even for things like space matter matter you know experience experiments in matter right uh, experiments in space technologies and so many startups this is all for startups not for not for uh, uh, companies like spacex or 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 uh, you know uh, uh, nasa or things like that okay so these are for startups and so many startups are do doing great things in uh, these uh, kinds of fields so take a look at the uh, companies the startups which are a part of the quantum computing stream of creative destruction lab university of toronto because there is something i saw that you know immense potential uh, being developed uh, from uh, all these technologies and they are nurturing it uh, you know to make it future proof right so this is something we can take a look at otherwise i don't see a lot of uh, uh, open positions in this in india and also big math and physics knowledge is needed and also aws take a look aws it's called aws break it i think break it uh because of the notation comes from the notation that you use in quantum computing uh, algos uh the name comes from that so aws break it amazon break it is a, a platform as a service that amazon provides for quantum computing massive uh, massive uh, opportunity for you to try out in in the lowest minimal amount of money you can just try out once and see what it is all about right you can do that okay going to blockchain uh, i'm i'm very sad that i have to cover this in 1 minute or 2 minutes otherwise i would have taken an entire day on this so in blockchain personally uh, but yeah of course if you if you are not able to cover a lot you can you know get in touch directly as well and happy to share any ideas that you have uh, or or you know uh, suggest you more on any ideas that you have so blockchain current trends are that make sure that your use case is identified many companies currently are doing is that they are force fitting blockchain just because of the hype of it they are force fitting blockchain into anything that they are doing that is not going to attract a lot of customers also that is going to increase a lot of overhead for you uh, eventually uh, to 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 manage a blockchain network it's not very easy right uh, so unless you provide some real value don't make sure that you don't use blockchain to be honest right most implementations have been in fintech and uh, cross border payments 
and uh, make sure that you take a look in permissioned blockchain networks that is uh, the need of the hour, not public blockchains uh, if you are if you are looking for things in india and you want to do something in the fintech or uh, such domains right understanding of smart contract experience is needed smart contracts are the programs that run on blockchains an entire lecture all together so won't go into that search for it you can use ethereum you can use solidity to write uh, smart contracts and uh, deploy them and they'll run uh, and good companies are using them we use them a lot of any blockchain company who's working on uh, blockchain uh, based platforms 99% sure they're using some kind of smart contract implementation so yeah that's something you have a great uh, uh, advantage of past computer science experience is needed but again you can delve into blockchain uh, very easily just make make sure that you understand the basics of blockchain then right uh, you had asked someone had asked for books in blockchain uh, so books uh, in books there is uh, there is one book called blockchain revolution uh, which is by don tapscott uh, take a look at that uh, he's a good guy make sure that even before you study books you read you get an idea of what blockchain is all about now read bitcoin's uh, white paper read ethereum's white paper you'll get to know what what they these people are talking about right so that is something uh, take a look at uh, maybe you can take a look at my book which is called secure chains uh, uh, again uh, yeah you can you can find it on the internet uh, there are there are uh, courses there are good courses uh, amit is doing courses on blockchain uh, and uh, there are also some courses by ec council uh ec council is famous already if you don't know ec council has been famous for since the last decade or so for their certified ethical hacker courses ceh every ethical hacker is almost a ceh right so now they have come come out with uh, their certified blockchain professional course very famous uh, ec council is you can take a look at that that is a good course uh, amity has a course on blockchain and many many other things are available on on the internet as well again directly reach out if you really need some uh, direct use case help i can i can help as well yeah expected salary is 14 lakhs to 21 lakhs typically i'm telling you from the experience as we hire have hired in the past are working in our company currently and also the positions that we have open are 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 uh, uh, priced at this this price point you can say uh, from the salary uh, perspective yeah easily uh, you have four years five years experience you can easily go at 17 18 lakhs which on the other hand and and honestly i've seen even in my case uh, without blockchain experience the kind of job i was getting right out of college and with blockchain experience what i got it was almost double uh, it was almost 1.7 times for me uh, not double directly but 1.7 times for me uh, seven eight times for me yeah so definitely a lot of uh, advantage there at least for now when it is in hype uh, and if it if it actually nurtures into something which the indian government accepts a lot of corporates uh, start accepting this technology definitely there's a huge huge potential ahead uh, blockchain was 2020's number one skill as voted by linkedin cloud computing was second artificial intelligence was fourth uh, ranked and blockchain was ranked one in 2020 let's see what happens in 21 it's only growing right okay cool this is one data i usually share you have a great chance i'll quickly say about this you have a great chance of doing something in blockchain because one in 400 people it engineers one in 400 it engineers know anything about blockchain or have any kind of blockchain skill this kind of advantage you don't get in other areas like java or 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 even in data science data science also the, the numbers are far uh, far uh, different from this because there are so many data science engineers now but blockchain is very very has a lot of dearth of talent that is why i have filled my full stack positions i have filled other positions in my company but not the blockchain position i have one junior and one senior blockchain position open since the last four months in my company and i have not been able to fill it because either the budget is uh, going too high uh, the the salary expected is going too high or the years of experience is less or the kind of uh, technologies they know is less so this is very good chance you can you can learn now i mean i am very happy that i came into blockchain at the right time i can tell you from experience and i would love to tell everyone who is even inclined to get into blockchain a lot of work is going on in blockchain right now dr burkha is doing a lot of uh, work in blockchain right now she's doing an entire phd i think uh, on 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 associated technologies uh, to this yeah so i think i think that's great advantage that you have now is the time now okay so quick look this you already know many people lost their jobs in um, the covid time and a lot of jobs are at stake but these data if you take a look at these data you leverage these data you get a lot of advantage you immediately you know catapult yourself into the forefront as compared to your peers you just need to have that initiative that is a keyword i want you to take from this lecture yeah all right so that's all you can just take a look at this slide or don't even need to read this slide right 
Uh, because uh, all it matters is you know uh, skills you have to develop skills to develop skills how do you do that just you know have some initiative to uh, stay up stay up stay up later and maybe uh, do a couple of more courses before you go out in the world of uh, uh, jobs of of your career yeah plan it now you have great time to plan it now um, i mean I, i i would have learned while i was in college i would have done uh, so much more because now is the time when i don't have time but college now if i compare now and my college i could see that uh, at that time i used to get free by 4 4:30 pm in my fourth year of college i used to get free by 2 pm because there were so less classes so much time that i wasted and now i don't even get free at 10 pm so stretching myself after that to learn cloud computing to learn blockchain further to write uh, books and stuff it is more painful than what it would have been if i would have given a uh, time after 2 pm uh, back back few years back right please make sure that you don't miss that time you you'll repent a lot later i i do right okay uh, so that's all so uh, yeah i if you have any questions i i can take up i just had four extra slides on blockchain so that you can be blockchain engineers uh, but i can i'm happy to take questions otherwise we'll be get we'll be done with yeah these are just few steps to learn blockchain start with computer science basics learn uh, learn And then learn the basics of blockchain. They are very different. I have taught so many faculty and PhDs as well who have such great uh, computer science uh, uh, basics. Definitely, they teach you right, and they have so so deep uh, computer science basics. But one thing I have I have uh, I have noticed uh, after after teaching almost four thousand or four thousand five hundred such uh, such audience, um, I have seen that even though they have good computer science basics, but there is. some uh, some problem in understanding how the blockchain basics is working because just because the kind of different technology it is right so that is that is something important uh, i think you should even even i if i learn a new technology now i'll take four days five days a week while i was learning blockchain it took me it took me half a month or more just to know the basics so that is when i realized that ni thoda to alag hai because of the distributed kind of nature consensus mechanisms in play then you are working on uh, different uh, uh, technologies new languages solidity is not something that uh, you know you've been learning since the last since 2010 right so these things are, are a bit different the how they work how the transactions happen you think that okay visa pay transaction happens in in a second uh, in in bitcoin it happens in 10 minutes 20 minutes 15 minutes you don't know when it will happen so all of this you know uh, creates a bit of problem in understanding but once you do then it's easy so make sure that you learn the basics uh, very well i i gave you an insight from directly from experience of teaching so many uh, students and uh, faculties and phd phd's that uh, uh, there is some uh, difference in this kind of technologies right all right these are few take a screenshot take a photo do whatever you want uh, these are few frameworks that you can look into while learning blockchain truffle ganache uh, uh, web3 web3 is what you use to uh, talk to uh, uh, blockchains especially like ethereum Uh, and you use solidity the language solidity it's written here to write uh, smart contracts that's all mainly you can take a photo or i can come back to this slide later and yeah learn to write smart contracts and start building d apps which is which are decentralized apps similar to apps that you know but uh, they run on blockchain and they are uh, a bit different in nature not very easily uh, built and not very easily uh, you cannot uh, make your users interact with such apps very easily there are ways to do that um for example if you want someone to interact with your decentralized app via the browser there is a wallet called metamask you must have heard about if you are into blockchain uh, metamask bridges that gap right so these things are a bit different you can learn you can get in touch and i can suggest more yeah all right yeah i am mostly done okay i'll just i'll just uh, give one feedback uh, form and uh, otherwise i think we are done i am ready to take some questions now Okay, uh, so I see that Ma'am has already given a feedback form. Uh, Ma'am, if you won't mind, I'm also giving this one. This just takes ten seconds and helps me, you know, uh, better my lectures uh, next time. And just it takes ten seconds. So the other one you might be feeling feeling for uh, attendance, but I request you to fill this one uh, so that I get an insight, get an insight of how it was for you and how I can change the same uh, going ahead. Right? Uh, yes. Any questions, please? Uh, I don't see any other questions here. Any questions? definitely in blockchain if we get get another chance we'll uh, do a technical workshop as well or something like that or uh, where we learn blockchain more but uh, this was all i could share in one one and a half hours even though we stretched way beyond uh, we were supposed to go till 12 pm we are now almost one so yeah yes any questions uh, ma'am any questions or anything then i can take them up or else we can drop off thank you so much mr abhishek uh 
myself, Dr. Vidhu Shisek, chairperson of the BCA course. Uh, you have talked about IoT, you have talked about blockchain, you have talked about quantum computing, and everything you have briefed so nicely, how they are implemented in the current scenario, how they are very much helpful to the different industry, and yes, every dimension you have touched. I think my students would be aware that we people keep on telling them that uh, it, it is very much needed that they have to learn about time management, which also you have covered how they, how they have to manage their time in the current scenario as if every month, every month we will be having new technology in the market. So they have to more focused on the learning and I was there throughout the session. I have seen that you have talked about the books also. What else we want from our guest speaker? You have touched all the dimensions. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. On behalf of the Institute, my sincere gratitude to you for accepting the request of Professor Barkha. And uh, I know you are very much occupied, but then too, you have extended your time. Thanks a lot. On, on behalf of the Institute, on behalf of Professor Barkha, thank you so much. Thank you to the faculty colleagues and the students. Uh, our students are very interactive. I can see that they were having the questions through the end. And this is just an online play, play just a token of gratitude from the Institute. Thank you so much, Abhishek. Thank, Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks a lot. I have Thank uh, you, everyone. left my credentials anyways on the last slide. So anyone wants to get in touch can do so. I can uh, guide you. Uh, WhatsApp is best, not call. Call is difficult. Otherwise, uh, yeah. But but yeah, only one thing is that please take an initiative and uh, do while you have time. That's all. Yeah, one thing that I wanted to share at the end. Yes. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you, you, Abhishek. Thank you, Parka, ma'am. Thank you, faculty members, Neeraj sir, Richa, ma'am, Vikas sir, Sumit sir. Everyone is there. Monica, ma'am. Thank you, student. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Abhishek. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All the students will be having their classes after lunch. They can take the lunch break and their classes will resume. If they are having any classes after lunch, they can have their class. Otherwise, break for the day. Thank you. <laughs>